Hey everyone, my name is Ryan and I'm currently a first year vet student studying at the University of Melbourne. Time really flies man, it has almost been a year since I moved over to Australia from Singapore. So I'm aware that you know very soon there will be a new batch of students coming to Australia to study overseas. So I was thinking why not share about the struggles that I faced when I first moved over to Australia as well as to share with you guys how I overcame them and also give you guys some tips on how to overcome them such that you guys can better adapt to your new environment. So I've prepared a misery list here today stating all of the struggles that I went through when I first came over. So let us go through this list one line at a time. Let's do this. So the number one thing on my list which I've actually covered before in my previous video, is actually loneliness. So this was something that I experienced initially when I came over to Australia. This was because when I came over to Australia, I actually left all of my family members and my friends um, with the exception of two of my batchmates behind in Singapore. So it felt as though I was starting a new life in an entirely new country. So initially the loneliness really hit me really hard and I felt myself spiraling downwards towards the depths of, I, I don't know. Sadness. But what really brought me out of this rut is actually me going out of my room and interacting with the people that I see in my apartment complex. So number one tip here in this point is to actually be open and try to talk to people. Talk to as many people as you can, make as many friends as you can. You don't have to be extroverted in order to do this. In fact, when I first came over, I actually experienced a few awkward encounters. I wanted to share this in my previous video, but I didn't really want to because it was kind of embarrassing. But for you guys, I'll share with you what happened today. So this incident happened when I was attending one of the orientation events which was held at a pub. So it was like a pub night event where we would drink like beer and we would interact with one another with our course mates. So I saw a table of Australians sitting together and I was thinking, hmm, why not go up to them and introduce myself to them? So I went up to them, I was like, hey, my name is Ryan. And then I think I was feeling really nervous at that point in time, but I made a really stupid de decision to ask a question which was, whereabouts are you from? So that girl was like, mm, I'm from Melbourne. And that response threw me off because I was thinking about what a stupid question I just asked. And because it threw me off, the next question that I asked was even worse. I asked her, so what do you do during your free time? Ah! It felt kind of strange, especially since this was like literally it, it was like literally a few seconds after I just met her and yeah, it got pretty awkward and afterwards I did have a few awkward encounters like that as well but what I eventually learned was that at the end of the day you know what, I'm still alive so nothing can really stop you except for yourself so must up the courage and just go for it man so this brings me to my next point which is to put in the effort to try to understand the slangs that your new country has. So when I first came over to Australia, I thought since Singapore's first language was English, I would probably be able to adapt really well to my new country. But within the first week, I realized that I actually needed to put in the effort to learn some of the slangs that you know Australians use generally. So what happened was that during one of my orientation events, they mentioned in the flyer that they were serving like free barbecue during lunch. So I was like, Heck yeah, barbecue, man. Because in Singapore, barbecue means like a lot of meat on like a grill, you know. So I was thinking I will get like a lot of free meat and a lot of like potatoes, corn, stuff like that. But then when I rocked up to the event, what happened was that they actually only served a slice of bread with like a sausage on top. And that really threw me off, especially since I purposely starved myself so that I could eat as much meat as possible since it was a free event. So um, I ended up starving that day, which was really sad. It did teach me 
that I needed to learn about Australian culture more though. So this links back to point one, which is to make as many friends as you can, preferably make some local friends as well, so you can learn more about the slangs that they use over there. So the next struggle that I faced would be the differences in culture. So this arises because when I was in Singapore, I was brought up differently compared to how the locals were being brought up in their home country. So the, these differences in experiences actually leads to a small overlap of your of interest, which means to say that when you meet with the locals, you probably not have much to talk about. So in order to have a greater overlap of interest with them, what you need to do is to actually learn more about what is big in a country that you are studying in. For instance, in Australia, many people often talk about the AFL, which is your Australian foodie. So it'll be good to learn a little bit about them so that you can actually talk about it when you meet some Australians. So recommendation is to dabble a little bit in everything. So try out different things like exploring different sites and places, try out the local food, watch the shows that are big in that particular country. Yeah, it's good to dabble a little bit in everything. So you have something to talk about when you meet new people as well. So the next struggle that I faced when I first came over to Australia as an international student was actually time management. I hate to admit it, but when I was back in Singapore, my mother actually settled most of the household chores. For example, my mom actually cooked my meals. She did grocery shopping. Um, you know, stuff like laundry, cleaning and all was basically done without me having to do anything. So when I first came over to Australia, I realized that I needed to do all of this by myself. And you know, all of these take up a little bit of time each, but when they add up together, they actually become quite substantial in terms of the time that they, it consumes. And this led to me studying less as a result. So what I really needed to do was to manage my time well and wisely. And eventually I figured that I could achieve this using a calendar app. So in my previous video, I talked about creating a Notion calendar. And I really feel that this has helped me a lot because I could allocate certain tasks that I wanted myself to accomplish within a day. And during the day, I just needed to focus on clearing them. And when you have something to focus on, it reduces the chances of you wasting time doing things such as, you know, watching TikToks for like, I don't know, two hours or something. Yeah, it will really make you more productive, I would say. Oh, one more tip that I found to have really helped when it comes to time management is to bulk cook your meals. So usually what I would do is the night before, I would actually cook a little bit more food during dinner such that when it comes to the next day's lunch, I actually can consume leftover food instead of putting in time to cook lunch. So the extra bit of time that I saved from cooking lunch, I can actually use it to do other things such as studying or even other things like hitting the gym. So the next struggle that I faced initially when I came over was settling life admin. Life admin comes in the form of your bank statements, um, converting your driving license, paying for your school fees, as well as other miscellaneous activities. So these things can often be completed within like five to 10 minutes, but because they are so boring, they are so mundane, I'm sure many of us end up procrastinating and leaving them to accumulate. But I really don't recommend this because once they accumulate to a very I don't know, to a certain point. It actually takes a lot of time to finish doing them. And this can actually impact the time that you could otherwise spend doing other things. So key thing here is if you can finish them now, finish it. Don't leave them up till the last minute when they can actually impact other areas of your life as well. If you were to try to clear them all at once. The next struggle that I faced was that when I first came over to Australia, I actually felt really lost. So this was because I was in an entirely new area and I had no idea what was around me and where I could go to find certain things. So what I recommend you to do is that initially when you first come over in the first few days, what you should do is during your free time, try to explore the place that you're staying in. So walk like a certain parameter around the area. Take note of the places that sell groceries so you can go to these places to buy groceries next time. 
Next, keep take note of places that sell your household appliances. And then finally, keep a lookout for your entertainment places, those places that you need to go to to relax. For example, your karaoke places, your bowling places, and even some restaurants. So if you are coming over to Melbourne or Australia, some apps that I found to be really helpful will be Eat Club and also Livin. So these two apps have been really helpful in helping me find places to eat as well as letting me discover the latest deals that are in town at these food places. If you have enjoyed my video so far, do remember to like this video, subscribe to my channel and ring that notification bell. Let us all get to 200 subscribers by Christmas. So the last thing that I have in my misery list over here is feeling like I need to do well in my studies. This is because when I first came over to Australia, being an international student, my school expenses are not cheap. So my parents actually had to fork out a lot of money to fund for my university expenses as well as my, for my accommodation and daily living expenses. So initially I felt as though I needed to do well in my studies in order to repay them and to show my gratitude to what they have done for me. However, this added a lot of pressure into my daily life and honestly this was really unneeded because it gave me a lot of stress and I couldn't focus on my exams or even on my day-to-day -day studies properly because my brain capacity was mostly spent worrying about unnecessary things that was out of my control. So I would rather you guys to take things as it comes, you know, embody the mindset of it is what it is and yeah, just be chill. That way you can focus better on things that you can actually control and whatever happens next won't really affect you and this will actually make you guys more resilient as well. Main advice here is to take things as it is. Let it flow through you. Don't let it affect you as much. So these are the struggles that I faced when I first moved over to Australia as an international student. So I hope that this video will let you guys feel that you know you are not alone and that there are people that are undergoing the same experiences and are feeling the same things as what you are feeling right now. I also hope that maybe some of these tips that I've provided in this video has been really helpful to you. And if you are free, do remember to check out my other video on how to survive overseas as an international student. I'm sure it will really help you out. So stay awesome and see you all in future videos. Peace.